through this one pretty quick because I haven't got long to record. So we're going to make an all synthetic fly. We're going to tie one of these. No way you can see this. Um, I don't do a lot of work with synthetics so I decided to give it a go anyway and um, this pattern seems to swim really quite good. And I've caught a few fish on it already so that's good news. Um, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to articulate it I could do with a lot of my flies. The reason I'm articulating is not really for the movement, it's to keep the, the flash tail away from that bend of the hook because it will catch. Um, you know, if you don't use an artic articulated shank on there, um, it, it does foul eventually. So I, I like to use these um, and also it gives me a few more options with the tying. Right, so we, in the vise we've got a 15mm uh, for skull. Uh, shank. Um, I've already put some thread down. I'm using GSP 100. Uh, I find GS. For, I'm going to use dubbing loops for this fly. Uh, I'm going to probably do three or four dubbing loops. And I find if I use GSP, there's no stretch in it, and it spins spins the flash better. Um, you can use whatever you want, but I find if I use a uh, power thread, there's there's a bit of stretch in there, and it doesn't really hold the um, the flash as well. So. For this, because I've had to start again, I've already cut my flashaboo. So what I used was um, still, uh, standard uh, Hedron Silver, Hollow Silver, uh, Moonlight, which has got black and pearl in there, um, and some uh, pearl uh, Hedron Pearl Flash as well. So I've cut these, and it's, I can't say how many, how many strands are here, but we're probably talking about 30 or 40. Um, I haven't used the full length, I've taken about an inch off, um, but it's up to you how long you want this fly to be. I mean, the, the original one that I've tied here, which I'm going to do slightly differently, um, is about six to seven inches long, which is a standard size that I tend to use. So I've tapered the ends as well, that's important. So the first thing we need to do, we need to create a, uh, a doubling loop with a thread. I'll do that, I don't know how well you can see this on the camera. I tend to go three or four down, close the loop, with the thread, come back over, and then go back down again. And then bring your thread up to the hook eye. We're going to use the whole of the shank for the for the, the flash dubbing loop. And I've got one of these real cheap dubbing loop tools. Um, I haven't felt the need to go and buy an expensive one yet because these work perfectly well. So I think they're only about three or four quid. Um, when you're when you're tying with dubbing loops, the important thing is to make sure you've got a decent soft wax. Um, so I've got some wax here. Uh, use any brand you like. They're all very similar. It's just wax at the end of the day, um, and that that keeps the um, stops the materials from slipping within the loop itself when you're spinning it. So I've got my my flash, and I'm now going to carefully put the flash within the dubbing loop. If I can open the dubbing loop up. So that's in there, and I'm putting it around 60 40, so 60 to the back, 40 percent to the front. And what that does is when you spin it, it creates a natural taper. So I want to make sure I spread this flash quite sparsely along the dubbing loop. I don't know how well you can see this. Now, the trick of dubbing flash dubbing loops is add a little bit more than what you think you need because you will lose some when you, when you spin it. So there we go. So what you do, you hold hold near the base of the flash and then you spin. Spin a few times to make sure you've got enough tension and then let go. There you go, and it spins. Now these will tangle up, so you need to get your scissors, make sure it's closed. If it's open, you're going to cut that straight through the flash. So just pull these bits of flash away because they spun around. I mean the polar flash especially has a tendency to twist. That's fine. That's why you use a little bit more than you think you need. There we go, it's pretty much done there. So we're going to give it one more spin. There we go. We'll gently tease those, those flash fibers out. Not too rough, otherwise it will break. There we go. And then gently 
keys them back. Now you can start wrapping that loop around your shank. So work your way out. Quite quite loose wraps. Not loose wraps, but tight wraps, but loose, at least, you know, fairly wide apart because we need to use up the whole of this shank. We don't want a big gap at the end. Otherwise you'll be putting more flash down just to cover it over. And it just looks a bit untidy if we do that. Just gently tease those fibers back as you go around so they don't get trapped. There we go. So close to the head now. I mean, you don't have to use a dubbing loop, but I find you get a little bit more profile when using loops if you're not using anything underneath. Uh, in this case, I mean, I'm not using bucktail. You just want to come over the top. Don't worry if you trap a few because we can sort those out in a minute. Go back over. Make sure that's locked in place. That. Now, to make sure you've not trapped any, what I tend to do is just hold them up like that and just put the comb for it. You'll break a few. It doesn't matter. Like that. You can see we've created a nice, nice wide profile flash tail. I'm just going to tidy that head up a little bit. It's a little bit untidy. And then we're finished. There we go. So that's the tail done. So it's pretty quick. A little bit of glue to the head just to make sure those, those wraps don't come undone. Super glue, use liquid fusion. Liquid fusion tends to go off in about 10 minutes or so, but it does, it soaks into the fibre as well. So I tend to tie on it when it's still wet. So I don't wait for it to dry. I haven't got time today, especially. We go, that's the tail done. So in the hook, we're going to put a Cuma Manta uh, 54550, which is a, the standard size that I use for a lot of my patterns. Again, tie the thread down, Let's create a base, got some blunt scissors. Right, we need some, if you've watched my previous videos, we don't need wire at the back here, we just need some heavy, heavy mono. I've got a 40 pound monofilament here. I'm going to tie that down. Just at the end, we don't need to come all the way down. And we're going to use some four, four or five millimeter beads. I can't remember what size these are. I think they're about four millimeter. And we're going to use two pearl and one red. I always use three. Three is a. It keeps the shank far, far enough away from the bend. Stop it uh, wrapping and you know, causing any sort of obstruction. So let's put that on. Make sure that's lined up. Got a bit of a loop. Don't close that loop at the back too tightly, otherwise that shank won't move. But obviously, we don't need to, don't want to leave it too open because it will then foul on the hook. So just want to tie this down. Start going around the bend of the shank of the hook to force those beads back. And so the shank's in line with the actual shank of the hook. And come down the hook length over the top of the monofilament to tie it down. You don't need to double it over. Tie down. Come back. And then we're good. So we're going to put some glue down on this. Right, we're ready for our second dubbing loop. So again, probably about 15, 15 centimeters is all you need. Close that gap, come back, and come down. We want to come down to probably just past the hook point. We need 
need to have some more wax on the dubbing loop. We also need to make sure this tail behind here behaves so let's try that down with a clip. Okay, so we need to we can make our second uh, flash. So we're gonna use a little bit more this time, but we're gonna use shorter and uh, shorter lengths just to build that taper down. So again we use moonlight, so I'm gonna take probably about 15 strands. When I'm going to do this, I'm going to cut it 60 40. That makes sense. They can't see what I'm doing here. Um, it's difficult to move the camera. I need two cameras, really one for showing you what I'm doing on the table, and one for showing you what I'm doing here. I can't afford two cameras unless somebody wants to send me one to try out. So I'm going to use um, Silver Hollow on top of the Moonlight and I need some Polar and Pearl. Again, 60-40. And lastly, we're going to add some red, probably about five, five strands. Ish. Just have to add that bit of contrast. It's got plenty of contrast already, if I'm honest with you, but I like a little bit of red. So we're gonna we're gonna um gently blend um each each stack. Now make sure that's they're tapered. I mean they will blend again when they're spun. You don't need to spend too much time on this because you will end up dropping your fuel along the way and if you've got sticky hands you know, they tend to stick to your fingers and make all sorts of mess. Just roll them around like that and just take those ends. Right, this is the tricky bit now. I've got to grab both of those. So I've got the the longest stack facing you so that's going to be closer to the tail and I've shorter stack towards the, the, the hook eye so I'm going to put this in here now like that and again probably about 60 40 60 to the back 40 you now I'm going to spread this out If you leave quite thick bunches in places, they don't tend to spin. You'll find that the flash will pull out eventually. So you need to make sure they're well spaced. Like that. And then hold hold the thread near the near the base of the flash. And then spin. So how well you can see this. It's important to keep that spinner away from the flash because you will catch them. There we go, and then let it go. Get your scissors and gently tease out those those uh, bits of flash that have wrapped round. Not so many on this one. Again, one more spin just to make sure that's secure. You can check it's secure enough by giving the flash just a gentle tug. Um, and if it's if it starts moving. You know you haven't gone and done enough spins. That's what that like. Now just wet your fingers and just tease that, tease that flash down, and then start working your way down, down the hook shank. Just tease those, tease that flash back as you're coming over. A little bit like that. If you catch them, doesn't matter, we can sort that out. Right, come down over two or three times, and then go back just to lock it. 
look a bit messy at the moment, we'll sort that out. Take your hand and just tease that back. And make sure though that loop's secure. And again, come with me, comb, hold it up, just pull your comb through it. So there you go. As you can see, it creates a nice little profile at the back. So that's that's the, the main bulk of the tail done, the flash tail. We're going to start working with some synthetics now. So I've got, excuse me, uh, what I like to do with my flies at the moment is add a little bit of bulk um, to the to the middle, just to create that create that profile. I and mean, I've got a roach pattern here. I don't know if you can see. It's got a quite a nice profile. It sort of widens as it gets towards the back of the hook and then goes back in again and to achieve that we need to add a bit of density um, to the um, to the midsection so what I do is I use um, something kit that I got from Gunner he uses a lot of this strong Hedron strong fuzzy fiber and I wasn't sure about it at first I've got a load here so um it's actually good stuff. It's good for just creating volume where you need it. Um, and like Gunner, I'm going to use a dubbing loop. I mean, if you've seen some of Gunner's videos, he tends to use a lot of this in the heads of his flies. Oops, and they look pretty cool as well. So, but I'm going to use it on this fly in the in the midsection, and I'm going to it, you won't you won't see it, but it will it will add the volume that I need. I'm just, I don't know if you saw what I did there, I just created a, an inch and a half, quite quite a lot in there. So I'm going to create another dubbing loop, this won't take long at all. I'm going to put that in front, this flash, again, come over, come down, it's going to come to about here, and some wax. We forgot. I'm going to put this in here. Move my dubbing tool. Here we go. There we go. And we're just going to spread that around. Taper it a little bit. Doesn't matter too much of this. I'm going to spin that up. There we go. Go through it with your scissors just to pull those fibers out, they will wrap. You could use a comb just to gently tease it out. One more spin. There we go, get a comb, tease it out. And then we're going to wrap this round. Like that. Flat down. And cut it off. Just get your comb and just make sure they're not all caught up. Maybe a bit of flash there, let's do a little bit of that. Okay, so that just adds a little bit of volume. For example, we're not using bucktail for this one. We could use bucktail, but I decided I'm going to try something different. So, well, one more dubbing loop now, and this time we're going to have a synthetic and a flash dubbing loop. This is going to be the last one. And then I'm going to finish the head off and put some eyes on, and then we're done. It doesn't take too long. I'm going to come to about here. Here's my tool for the go. Okay, for this one, we're going to use flash and um, pipe skins, jet boat mainly pipe skins. Um, so I'm going to take 
What's this one? Gun metal grey. I'm going to take white. I'm just going to blend those together. And add some polar flash to it. You don't need too much. Less is more, as I say. Now we need to think where where this dubbing loop is going to come down to the fly. So we need to measure up and make sure we've added the right length. So I would probably say where it's going to go. Probably to about here. So we need I don't know, five inches. Remember that's going to be tapered as well, so that's more likely to be six. And we're going to add some of the gunmetal grey. About the same amount, about six inches. And you find with the pipe skins, it doesn't twist too well. In the so we don't use too much of this. So I'm just going to blend this together. Just gently pull it through. A nice blend. I'm going to add some polar flash. I quite like, like a lot of polar flash, so I'm going to add quite a lot to this one. So probably a bit more than I have done previously. I'm going to have about, have about six inches of polar flash. I'm going to add a bit of red headroom uh, hollow flash to it, not too many, four stands, axe, again about six inches. Now we can, as you can see that, that's all, all together. I just need to blend that up a little bit. So just pull it through. We'll lose some, so maybe add more than I think you need. Make sure that red's separated, otherwise it'll be showing in one clump in the fly. There we go, a little bit like that. And as I'm pulling that through, that's actually naturally tapering the material. I'm quite happy with that. Get rid of any super long ones. That seems to be a little bit tangled. And we'll put this in the dubbing loop. Again, we're going to do this 60-40. I'm going to make sure that's well spread. And the taper, so if you can see that the box got there, so that will come to about here on the fly. We want to make sure that we put the materials down, otherwise, they will catch and then start spinning. Oh, I've had a problem. accident here, I've lost my loop. Spin that round. Spin it again. Pull tight. And come through and gently, gently sort out this mess because it will make a mess. Again, we've only got three or four skins because the uh, the, the puck skins is quite a stiffish material in the dubbing loop itself, right, so it will it doesn't spin too well. I'm sure there might, there's probably better ways to create that profile, but I've got this at the moment. Just gently untangle them. One more. Bit of a hash of this one, but that would do. Okay, so we'll gently tease that back, clip off. And wrap round. So, and 
put that down. Come back. Now we need to put a comb through this. It's a mess at the moment, but it will it will sort itself out. Just put your scissors gently through because there are do you occasionally find the the straps the, the flashes catch. There you go. Okay. So you can see that the profile that's created. Let's make this profile. Right, now we need to finish the head. So come down to the eye, then back again to put some thread wraps down. Now for this, I'm going to use um, pipe skins. I'm also going to use some funky hair as well in a very similar kind. It's slightly coarser than the, the pipe skin. Um, I prefer to use that on, on the head of this fly. Um, you can use the gunmetal grey as well. But to you, I have done a number of flies. Um, I've got glisten glint on the head on that one. They're all very similar uh, synthetics. Um, although they do have subtle differences, um, the funky hair is slightly coarser than the uh, glisten glint and the, uh, the pipe skins. Use whatever you have. Right, so we need to darken that head. At the moment it's quite a white fly, as you can see from the original. That pattern's a bit darker. Um, and we didn't have any fuzzy fibre in this one, so that's why it looks darker. So we're going to start on the head. I'm going to take some, some gunmetal grey monkey hair. I want to come to, we probably need about four inches, maybe five inches. I'm going to taper that. And then for the base, we're going to use a mixture of um, uh, white, white uh, pipe skins. Again, we're going to use probably about four inches on the base. I'm just cutting that to the desired. I'm going to mix that with a bit of gunmetal grey just to darken it. Again, four inches. And we're going to put a bit of Angelina fibre, blend that through. You can use, I've, I've used all sorts, I've used Ripple Eyes, um, Deer Creek Glisten Flash, all sorts. But it's up to you what you want to do. So I'm just going to blend that through like that. I want to make sure those ends are tapered. We add a little bit more, we haven't got quite enough there, so I'm going to take a bit more. Just the advantage of not cutting beforehand is you can work out the volumes as you go. I'm just going to create the taper. Just roll it with fingers. A bit like that. You want to come down to about there. Make sure that's secure tight. And then for the base, the underneath, we've got a mixture of white, as I said, and grey, and some Angelina. Add a little bit of flash in there. Yeah, a little bit like that, and then underneath, probably about 60-40. I say everything's 60-40 today. You can gently tease that back. You know, don't come over the top. Just create a dam in front because we want those materials to quite stiff and upright. If you come over the top you tend to flatten the head a little bit. So the last little bit of 
I need to do it again, I'm going to use the got my little grey funky hair we can use a shorter section this time, we're going to use 3 inches I'm just cutting that now and quite a, quite a large amount and then we're going to put some mandolina fibre through that Again, blend it up. As I said before, blending you tend to take the tape of what you're doing it. There we go, just tape it a bit more. That's good. Now we, we're going to shape the head by cutting it anyway, so don't worry about the profile too much at the moment. I come down over the top. Now you can add a lateral line here if you like, um, uh, lateral scales, I've done that before. I prefer just to leave it off on this one, it's up to you what you do. So last section is the base, I'm just going to use again white, white pipe skins, a bit more than I did the previous one, and a little bit of grey, some little pipe skins to that. I've used the funky hair as well if you want to chew. Not too much. I'm going to put a little bit of Angelina fibre through it. Like that. I just blend it all up. Make sure that's well blended. Tapered. And come down underneath. Make sure that's tightly secured, and then just gently fold these these back. And just build a build a dam towards the head to keep that material in check. Like that, we're finished. Now, I like, what I like to do, I don't like this thread white, so I'll just add a little bit of black to the top. Just run the marker through the top of the, the head, just to darken it a little bit. Just use your fingers to spread that through. Right. For the eyes, I like to use these 12mm, you can see them, um, you know, made by Flyman, they're called Fire. Uh, I know um, Jetback nearly made to sell them as well. Um, I'm not sure about Deer Creek, but I like I like that sort of orangey, yellowy, red colour in this fly. So we're going to do what I usually do, which is we're going to put a bit of um, Tim Ender down to soak through the head. Not too much, I don't like to use too much of this, just enough to soak through the materials. And do the same on the other side. And then we're going to put some Evo Stick Series glue down. A good blob of this because these eyes are quite large. The larger than I usually use, I usually use 10mm. But we want to make sure that they're secured. And what I'd usually do now is I'd let those eyes set for half an hour and then I'd come and trim the head. But I'm, as we do a shooting a video, I'm going to trim the head while those eyes are in there. So it might be quite an interesting result, we'll see. Anyway, so what I tend to do is take the fly at the vise, it's just a bit easier. And I come in from the back. I just 
come down a lot of longer scissors would probably be more useful and just gently trim to shape that head. So if you use more materials you can always cut them back off if you use less you don't you don't have that that luxury. To the underside we don't spend too much time on this. Danger when the glue's still setting. I'm going to get glue on the scissors. It's starting to take shape now. Just gently just trim away just the shape, the shape you want. Squeeze those eyes down, it's still fine. Lastly, underneath, just tidy it up a little bit. And there we go. And that was a filthy roach. I'll probably trim a little bit more later on as well. Yeah, all synthetic roach, you can see it's got a nice profile in it. As I said, you can tie whatever colour you want. I mean, last night I tied a, a very bright yellow perch. And these, are the, these are the new eyes, the new um, uh, zombie eyes from Deer Creek. They look pretty cool. Um, you can tie it in sort of classic roach pattern. This is a mixture of pike skins and uh, glisten glint from Deer Creek. Again, so you can go all black, black and purple. And that was it. Thanks for watching.